Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you back to this course on the inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. And uh, what we have looked at in the previous lecture was as follows. We, I try attempted to convince you that there are inorganic ions which are present in enzymes. How they are present, etc., I have not told you that we will discuss later on, but they are doing a wonderful jobs. Each one of these has an important role. It could be an iron ion, it could be a zinc ion, it could be a copper ion. These are the three examples I have taken. This could be a manganese ion, uh, it, it could be a molybdenum. So, I have taken examples for uh, these just to give you a feel that there are inorganic elements which sit in the biological systems and uh, do real wonders. Okay, now, let us continue that. Uh, spirit and get into uh, further aspects of it. And in this particular slide, you can see how do we understand all of this. Okay? So, how do we understand all of this? So, uh, in order to understand all of this, we have to uh, understand the inorganic chemistry that is going on uh, in the biological systems. Okay? And particularly in the biological systems, in the process of the biological molecules, uh, even cells, etc. And also by studying these inorganic chemistry processes in the, in the life. So, how these inorganic chemistry elements, inorganic elements affect the life processes. So, therefore, overall we will try to look at the role of inorganic chemistry elements in biological systems, in simple biological molecules, in cells and in some examples for the organ, so the body and how the supplements and the drugs as well. So, therefore, we will go uh, uh, one by one up into these aspects. So, uh, so, now the question comes is that for a chemist, well, the chemist's tool is the periodic table and everyone knows the periodic table of elements which is introduced as early as the ninth, tenth standard in the high school. Therefore, you have a large number of boxes here on the left side in the center and the right side and the bottom and uh, come to this a bit later stage and you have uh, uh, elements uh, you know spread over all this. So, when you have uh, elements of all these as you can see that uh, so many elements you have, is it true that all of these elements are important in the life or only certain elements are important in the life. This needs to be understood. So, as we keep going further in the next uh, few slides or so, we will certainly understand this. So, right now let us say yes, there are a large number of elements. In fact, today it is 118 elements are there, though this particular thing shows uh, um, you know, 104 uh, elements but we have 118 elements of this. Of these elements, which are the things are important in the life processes? This we need to uh, understand that. So, which are these elements are uh, important? So, therefore, this uh, is concerned with, so we will try to understand what are the uh, kinds of elements in the periodic table which are important. So, therefore, let us look at the aspects that are concerned with the role of uh, elements in biology. What are the aspects that is concerned? So, when you say some of the elements are uh, used by the life, which are the elements are used by the life? So, the question number one is that which are these elements essential for living cells in biology? And that is not sufficient enough. How much? What amount are these present? Okay, these two are there. And how come? Who chooses this? It is also an important thing. It is also a very curious aspect. And then, so when you choose this, when you have one element, then no problem. When you have two elements, which one of these will have a more, which one of these will have a less? When you have three, when you have more, more than one element, there can be mutual interactions among themselves. Some may be dominant over the other, which I will explain you a little later on. They may uh, make their friendship uh, to a cooperative way and they may extend their uh, their uh, interactions even antagonistically. I will explain both these terms a bit later. 
with uh, proper connectivity meaning as well as connectivity. Okay, so, you have which are the things essential, how much amount they are there, who uh, chooses all this, how are these being chosen and whether you have any interactions in this. If so, where are these present, how are these present? A bit of it you already noted from my earlier slides that they are present in the one of at least one of the things is that they are present in the enzymes uh, and how they are present I have not talked to you, we will see all this. So, they are there, what do they do in the biological systems? So, therefore, this is all is important when you look at the uh, inorganic uh, uh, role of these elements in the biological because as you can see there are so many elements are there and not whether all these elements are essential or only part of these essential uh, or elements are essential that we need to uh, understand this. For that these questions uh, uh, arise in, uh, uh, now at this stage. Uh, okay. So, keeping these things aside in the recent literature there are other uh, uh, queries have come up. How important is a particular element? When you say a particular element or a particular ion is important uh, in for a particular function, how important is this? How do we know how important is this? So, we will know what happens by asking a question, I will remove that ion, what happens to the enzyme? I will put another ion, what will happen to the enzyme? Whether the enzyme becomes a new enzyme, whether the enzyme becomes completely passive with no reactivity. So, these are some of the things in the modern concerns that have. So, when I replace one of the already present ion in the biological systems by another one, uh, uh, then what happens? I can not only change the ion that is being present, these ions are bound by the uh, amino acid residues which I will come later stage and those residues I can also play with it. So, if I change the ion, if I change the amino acid residue, what will happen to the uh, process of those uh, you know enzymes. So, all these are additional recent concerns besides the concerns which I explained to you in the previous uh, slide uh, in that. Okay. So, uh, therefore, what I would like to propose in this particular course uh, is very um, you know generally speaking. So, we first need to look at the inorganic ions, inorganic species and what their role in life is and that is what I call it as an introductory role. In fact, such an introductory role is, is, is very well suited to even to uh, 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 you know 12th standard students to drag them or to attract them into taking a um, profession on the uh, science kind of a profession. Uh, so, in fact, it can attract even uh, the students of 12th standard thing. Of course, it is very useful for bachelor and master students as well too. And once I complete that, I would enter into the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. It is a huge area of which in the first stage, I will just introduce what they are doing and etcetera. So, those are the things I will be looking at and uh, once I introduce what kind of a metalloproteins, metalloenzymes, their classification, their functions, all of these are uh, briefly being mentioned. We will smoothly get into the next topic as a part 3 is how they function, what function and how they function. These I refer to as a functional aspects of metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. This up to this if you take it, it comes more of a biological inorganic chemistry. Now, I would like to add in my course not just uh, the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes, I would like to take even the inorganic ions or inorganic species, how they interact with other biomolecules, how they interact with the cells, how they interact with the organs. These are some of the aspects I would like to introduce in this course as a very new component and a very elegant kind of a component to give a kind of a completion to the course uh, that will be uh, given this. It is not only that, I also wanted to add another perspectives which are coming where the inorganic ions, inorganic species, inorganic complexes acting like medicines, how, what and how uh, these are the some of the aspects. So, the overall I would like to um, 
uh, sort of uh, divide this into five parts, uh, part of uh, the inorganic ions and species in life and introducing the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes, the functional aspects of metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. And then I would talk about the other biomolecules and cells, how the inorganics will interact with them and what their role in the medicinal aspects. So, uh, so these are the, some of the uh, coverage uh, aspects of this particular course at this stage. Okay, uh, having uh, mentioned that what, so what I said, I said that uh, we will try to go through these five parts of the uh, topics, uh, the initial introduction of the inorganic ions and species, then just introduce the metalloproteins and metalloenzymes, what they do, etc., and how diverse they are and then go into how they are doing it, that is called function. So, the functional aspects of these metalloproteins and metalloenzymes. So, as I said this particular part is mainly covered in the biological inorganic chemistry, but I would like to take up in this particular course a few more aspects. The aspects of the inorganics with other biomolecules and cells as well and then also would like to see the uh, inorganic ions and species, how they act in medicine kind of things. Okay. So, so with this uh, like, let us again look back uh, into this. So, the periodic table uh, you have uh, the uh, alkali, alkyl earth ions, you have the main group elements, you have a transition ions and you have a inner transition ions in these things. Okay. So, we will uh, get back to this a bit later. So, having seen this now we need to identify which are the elements are important or which are the elements have been chosen by the life. So, for this I would take you back to 2 to 300 years back into the into the history of life. So, if you look at the history of life in a uh, 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 in a uh, in the in the history of life the essential elements uh, so as you can see as early as in 17th century people know that the iron is essential. And people have come to know in mid 80s, uh, mid uh, 19th century which is 1850, people knew that the iodine is also important. In the early uh, 1900s, people knew that the copper is essential. And then 1930s, people have started understanding uh, this manganese is essential, zinc is essential, cobalt is essential. So, so many ions have been started adding to this one to the other, one to the other. So, molybdenum then comes in 50s to 60s, molybdenum, selenium, chromium also. Uh, some of them may look to you, it is a, it's a puzzling, because some of these ions you may think that they are toxic, I will explain you that as well. And some more ions have been identified at a later stage in 70s, early 70s like tin, vanadium, fluorine, silicon, etc. And a bit later nickel, arsenic, uh, you may say that arsenic is, uh, uh, is the poisonous. So, any element that uh, you would come to know after a while can be poisonous when you have a large concentration, but they could be even essential elements at the lower concentration which I will convince you in the next uh, later few slides. And uh, one step later uh, people have tried to find out uh, that there is some role of lithium, bromine, cadmium, lead etcetera, but not proven so much. And very recently uh, just about uh, in the past let us say 30, 40 years the tungsten has also been found to be involved. In fact, tungsten is not found to be involved in the normal life of the human, but is found in the life where the life grows at a very high temperature. Uh, where is the life of high temperatures? In the lava. So, if you see lava eruptions have got uh, higher temperature 300, 350, 400 degrees Celsius, where certain kind of a species, bacterial species uh, are, uh, grow and in that the tungsten and tungsten takes the role of molybdenum, tungsten takes the role of the uh, molybdenum in this. So, therefore, we, as we can see that this is the way that uh, uh, starting from last 200, 250 years we have started learning, understanding the involvement of the uh, uh, ions or elements in the biological processes even including the human uh, body um, kind of thing. So, having seen such a kind of a uh, you know hierarchical uh, kind of a development 
a chronological kind of a development I am sorry is not a hierarchical it is a chronological because the time based. So, time based is referred as a chronological uh, aspects. So, you know uh, iron then you know iodine then you know copper then you know zinc then you know many other ions are required, but still they are limited in number as you can see. Now, if you come and look at uh, now we take a, a big leap or jump and look at the composition of the human body. So, uh, look at initially on the right side of this. So, on the right side of this as you see that uh, the body has huge amount of water uh, 64 which is almost two thirds is, uh, uh, is the water and one, four, one fifth is only the protein and about uh, one tenth is the fat and you have much less is the carbohydrate uh, and some minerals etcetera. So, whatever you have uh, real important uh, elements are all within this particular thing. So, water being the maximum followed by protein followed by fat and the remaining, but it is very essential to understand what these elements present in these mineral category we will come to know in a while. Instead of looking at uh, uh, this kind of a compositional way, let us look at the elemental type of compositional way. So, the elemental type of compositional way is that the maximum element in all this is oxygen, it's two thirds going two thirds with the water, two thirds of the oxygen. And then you have a carbon which is about 18 percent, you see the protein is 20 percent, you can see the carbon is 80 per 18 percent. So, it goes well very well with it. That means, most of the carbon is coming from the protein, most of the oxygen is coming from the water etcetera etcetera. And then you have 10 percent of the uh, hydrogen because hydrogen is present in the protein as well as in the water and other things. This other is, is very very essential and important and that is what we need to understand highlight these things and that is what is going to uh, uh, be important in this particular course on inorganic chemistry of life uh, in this. So, let us go to the uh, little further. So, having said that we have carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen and you see on this carbon is around 18.5, uh, oxygen 64.8, nitrogen 3.2, hydrogen 9.5. See, you add them all together, you will get something like 96 percent. That means, uh, we as a human bodies, uh, we are so fat, uh, uh, but um, uh, in this uh, fatty body, what we have is mainly these elements. Let us look at uh, these, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, these are present in 18.5 uh, percent carbon, 64.8 percent oxygen, 3.2 percent of nitrogen and 9.5 percent of the hydrogen. So, these are the kinds of major elements. If we add up add them together, you will get a big uh, uh, 96, big 4, the 4 is 4 elements. The big 4 is because the whole body is dictated, the whole body composition, the whole body weight is dictated by the big 4, the big 4 is this. So, will you be happy to have these 4 and have nothing else? And if so, then you will not be functioning as a human, then you will be just functioning like a just as a fatty body, nothing more than that. Then what you need to have a human life, to human life you need not only the fatty body components like these four, but you also need certain major elements. These major elements are macro minerals, also referred as macro minerals and these are calcium, the potassium, sodium. The phosphorus, sulfur, uh, uh, chloride, of course, magnesium, all of these. So, these are major elements. So, after these 96 percent, you have these 3.9 percent. What is left? The left is 100 minus 96 plus 3.9, it becomes 0.1. So, the 0.1 is the one which you are seeing. So, obviously, 0.1. So, when you have a 0.1, what do, what do you understand that 0.1 obviously is very, very small when you compare with 100. So, therefore, this is uh, uh, this 1000th part of a 100 percent of that. So, you have something when very, very such a small you call it as a trace. So, the word trace is coming from the uh, concentrations that you present, but not their role is trace, their role is very, very important. So, if you have big four elements, you will have fatty body, you will not have any life at all. Then you have this big four plus major elements, 
you have a strong body, you have a fat, you have a strong body, but still you cannot do functions. So, if you have the big four, you have the macro minerals and you also have the trace elements, then you are a perfect human body. Where uh, what I mean by perfect human body is that you can really uh, function like a human body. So, from this slide what you need to understand just having 96 percent is not good enough uh, to say that I am a human being, I cannot function like a human being. Suppose you take uh, uh, an exam and if you get a 96 percent uh, marks you are absolutely happy, but you cannot be very happy if you take have just these four elements. And then uh, people who get 99.9 uh, .9 percent of the marks they are of course absolutely toppers and they will be flashed everywhere across the news media and they are the, uh, the top guys who will be selected by all the high level institutes etcetera. But here after adding 96 plus 3.9 99.9 still I would say this is just a skeleton with some fat but nothing more than that no life in it. So, if I want to put add life to this I have to add trace elements this 0.1 percent. So, for a bio inorganic chemist biological inorganic chemistry and if you have want to have real life of your body it is the four elements big four elements macro minerals are not sufficient enough you need to have the all the trace elements. So, it is like uh, it is like uh, you know you used to hear uh, the Lord uh, Brahma makes the human body first you make the body then you put what is essential components then you put what will be the further function it is exactly similar way that you would see over here too. So, therefore, we are uh, going to have uh, an important uh, uh, you know entire course which is dependent on these trace elements uh, mostly to some extent these elements as well but nothing on the carbon oxygen nitrogen or uh, hydrogen at all in this particular course we do not need that. So, therefore, a healthy body requires not only the bulk elements like big four not only the uh, the macro minerals all these uh, seven you also need all these uh, about dozen uh, trace elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, this uh, dozen uh, uh, essential elements are absolutely uh, important uh, in that. So, having said that let me let me recapitulate what we have uh, said in the previous slide and trying to uh, explain and make you to understand uh, made this into categories. So, therefore, the element that are required uh, to bulk are called carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. These are all involved in making the main molecular mantle like for example, proteins, for example, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, lipids they are all formed from carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulfur. So, therefore, your whole body is built with uh, these ones. Then the macro minerals and some of the ions like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium and then chloride, phosphate, sulphate etcetera. So, all of these are also important and as you have seen from the previous uh, slide that together all of these is greater than 99 in fact, this is 99.1. So, so the rest is the uh, category 3. So, in this category 3 the, the is the one as I said earlier is absolutely important. So, who gives the life to the body human body it is these elements which will add the life to the body. If these elements are not there life is removed from the body and it is basically non functional body. So, non functional body to a functional body. So, therefore, you require the uh, trace elements to be uh, added uh, into that. So, in this depending upon the concentrations this can be uh, divided into two parts and the in the first part we call it as a trace and the second part we call it as a ultra trace. So, trace elements are those where these are present uh, about uh, a couple of grams per 70 kilograms body weight a couple of grams per a 70 kilograms of body weight. So, such kind of things are trace elements and those which are present a few milligrams uh, for a body weight of 70 kilograms of body weight and they are called ultra trace. Both trace and ultra trace elements are very important in life 
and these are the ones which add life to you uh, basically the body. And of these let us make one next categorization is uh, the metals and the non metals kind of thing. So, therefore, you have a manganese, you have molybdenum, cobalt, chromium, vanadium, nickel, cadmium, lead, lithium these are coming from the metal direction and there are some non metals are also coming up and these non metals are uh, fluoride or fluorine, iodine, selenium, silicon, arsenic, boron. Some of these may think uh, little unusual to you I will explain that now a little and more uh, later. So, I will tell you uh, the silicon obviously uh, very small amount of silicon is required, uh, very trace ultra trace amounts of silicon is required, but it is not uh, found in any of the enzyme yet. The arsenic very small amount of the arsenic is required, but it, it, it is not found any in any of the enzyme, but still they are required at very small concentrations of these uh, of these ones. So, now you understand the life uh, uh, means it is not just the fat containing body life does not mean fat plus the macro minerals. The life human life means the fat containing aspects, macro mineral containing aspects and the trace elements. So, therefore, I would like to sort of define uh, a human life in the following way. So, uh, fat items plus macro minerals plus I will write in a different color uh, this one it is the uh, trace and ultra trace elements. Okay. So, uh, so the, uh, the human life if you are, uh, are emphasizing on the term life. So, that life comes only when you add uh, these when you do not add this there is no life at all. So, therefore, uh, uh, so, these are some of the important aspects that one need to be uh, realizing that. Okay. So, without this just the fat uh, items the fat body and with the macro minerals you will have a strong body, but you will not have uh, any functional that fat plus macro minerals plus the uh, trace elements that if you make then becomes absolutely uh, a full life of these. Uh, so, so, to sum up uh, what I have talked to you is in the first part of the lecture I have talked to you uh, the uh, inorganic elements are present in some aspects such as called the enzymes, uh, but I have not explained you how they are. Then the next stage we have uh, looked at which are the ions in the periodic table are important and that also we have looked at and only certain kind of elements. Then we have looked at the chronological order how this has come up from uh, very early days knowing from iron to iodine to copper etcetera and sort of more of this. And then we know what is the composition today uh, human uh, body composition. Human body composition we have looked at the four elements like uh, carbon, uh, uh, nitrogen, oxygen uh, these kinds of uh, elements will make uh, the total body weight into more than 99 uh, percent uh, and then there are some uh, elements which are uh, which are basically called macro minerals together is 99.9 and it is that 0.1 percent of the elements which we categorized as trace and ultra trace elements and these trace and ultra trace elements indeed add life. Uh, to the body and then you can say just uh, life is really uh, human life only when you add all this. This is where uh, uh, in this particular lecture uh, that I will I would like to focus then we will see the aspects following that uh, how these are where these are present and uh, those kind of details will be seen in the uh, next lecture. Uh, thank you very much.